Certainly delighted that you all are, are with us as we uh, get on the sixth Sunday of celebrating God and worshiping God in this manner. I pray and trust that uh, we've been holding on to the whole aspect of the idea or even the, the hope, I would say, uh, that we're not uh, laying in our beds and not too comfortable when it comes to, again, our praise and our worship because we know it offers uh, the whole idea of sacrifice. And so I pray and trust uh, that we are making ourselves ready for these worship services and not, and not becoming any way lackadaisical or complacent about it. Um, as you see right now, we're not yet started because we want to kind of keep a sense of normalcy. Uh, we know that when we do gather on our average Sunday morning, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of talking. Uh, and the like that's going on. And I'm just looking at just trying to keep that same sense of of uh, who we are, kind of that identity of who we are uh, as it uh, relates to how we gather on uh, on an average Sunday morning. And we call it organized chaos, a lot a lot of moving around, a lot of parts that are going on. Uh, so we're grateful to, uh, to be here on this morning. As we do know, this would be the Sunday that we would normally gather together for our women's, what we call our women's annual day. Things are a little different now, but thank God uh, the director of our women's ministry, or ministry, minister of our min women's ministry is here today. Uh, Denise Harris is going to uh, lead us in a time of prayer. Leanna is going to be leading us in the reading of the word of God. And at some point uh, when we have our time of prayer, I'm going to ask uh, that Keith would lead us in a moment of prayer, in a session of resistory prayer. And asking even right now for you to be praying for the family of Yancine Robeson, her uh, father passed away, uh, and we certainly want to be praying for her and for her family, uh, not COVID-19 uh, related at all, just some ailments and the like that he been afflicted with, and he did die, and so we want to be praying for the family and for all of those that are going forward. Well, we're getting ready to start our worship service, so let's get ready. I don't know if y'all stand up, whatever it is that you normally do, but let's do that. Let's join in in praise of our God as Warren's going to lead us. Leanna's going to come read the scripture, and then again, Denise is going to lead us in prayer, and we're going to continue moving further in our worship today. So if you can, give God a hand praise right where you are. Amen.
one we gotta call on Jesus. Change him and charged him to go to Mordecai yeah. to know what this was and why it was. Mm -hmm. So Hattie went forth to Mordecai and to the broad place of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and the exact sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay yes. to the king's treasurer, yes. but the Jews were destroyed them. Mm. Also, he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given out in Shushan to destroy him, mm -hmm. to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto him, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. Yeah. And Hatchet came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spake unto and came, I'm sorry, and gave him a message unto Mordecai, saying, mm -hmm. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the king into the into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law for him mm -hmm. that he be put to death, except mm -hmm. those to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come, come in come unto on. the king these 30 days. Mm -hmm. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai bade them return answer to Esther. Think not with yourself that thou shalt escape in the king's house mm -hmm. more than all the Jews. Yeah. For I, thou altogether, holdest thy peace at this time. <laughs> then will relief and deliverance arise and the Jews from another place. But thou, but though in thy father's house will perish, mm. and whom knoweth whether that thou art not coming to the come sorry, I'm sorry. And whom knoweth whether thou art not come to the kingdom yes. for such a time as this? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then Esther bade them return answer <laughs> unto Mordecai. Yeah. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me. Mm -hmm. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Mm. I also and my mate, maidens will fast mm. in like manner, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. Yes. Yeah. And if I perish, I perish. Yes. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. My Lord. My Amen. Lord. Father, yes, yes God. we stretch our hands to thee, Father mm -hmm. God. Yes. For Talk no other him. help we know, Talk God. To him, Denise. Lord, we come right now, yes, God, God, saying thank you, thank, thank, you, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you. For all the many wonderful blessings you've mm -hmm. bestowed upon us, God. Lord, we come right now, Lord, asking yes. you to forgive us of our sins, yes. Father God. Yes. Lord, those things that we've done knowingly and mm. unknowingly, God. Those things, Father God, that we put in our minds to say, Father mm. God, that was contrary to your will, God. Yes. Lord, we ask you for forgiveness, Father yes. God. Yes. 
And Lord, we come right now, Father God, because Lord, we know that we only can lean and depend yes. and trust in yes. you right now, yes. Father God. Yes. Lord, you've placed us in a place, Father God, where we cannot, Father God, My move. God. We oh. can't do the things that we want to do, Father oh, God. Lord, but you have My given Lord. us this time to yes. talk to you, Father God, yes. to lean and trust in you, God. Yes, so in this oh, time, Lord. Father God, I ask you right now that you would just clean our minds, Father oh, God. Yes, God. Renew our hearts, Father God. Renew in us a, yes. the right spirit, Father yes. God. Lord, help us to take this help time God. out, Father God, help to God. understand, Father God, who you are in help our lives, God. God. Oh, help Jesus. us to understand, yeah. Father God, who we are in ourselves, Ooh, God. God. Lord, so many times we don't even know who we are, God, Lord, God. that we can't even know who you oh, are, yes. God. So I ask that you would clean us up, Please, Father God. God. Clean yes. our minds, God. Clean our oh. hearts, God. Lord, I ask that you would touch each individual touch woman, Lord. Father God, on today yes, God. as we celebrate yes. Our Women's Day, Father yes. God. Lord, I ask that you would cover us, Father God, because yes. we've had to take on so many different roles uh, since we've been at home, Father My God. Lord. And Lord, I continue to ask you, God, that you would just clean us, God. Yes, Let God. us know that we have the strength to do everything that you've called Jesus. us to do, Father God. And Lord, I just ask, Father God, that you would bless families bless. right now, bless. that you would bless Lord. marriages, God, Please, God, that you would keep the oh, men's hands please, off the God. women, Father God. Oh. Lord, that you would My keep Lord. the children safe, My Father Lord. God. Yes, God. Lord, when we don't know, Father God, oh, what's Jesus. going on in that house, God. Lord, but you know, God. Yes, and I know Lord. that you can be everywhere God. at every time, Father God, all yep, over this God. nation, yep, God. Yes, and Lord, I thank you, Lord, yep, for your Lord. omnipresence, God. Yes, I God. thank you, Lord, for being omniscient, God. Yes. I thank you, Father God, for everything, thank God. Thank you. As you will bless God. this service, God, help yes, it to be the service that you would call it to be, Father God. Help Pastor Skinner to bring on forth your word yes, that we may hear, word. Father God. Yes, God. And Lord, I ask you would touch oh, Marcy Lord. right now, God. Yes, God. Bless her knees she's standing, God. Yes. Lord, bless her body, Father God. Yes. Lord, bless every ailment that she may be having right now, God, yes, that she can walk out of here, Father God, feeling better than she walked in, God. Yes, God. And Lord, I thank you for this yes, opportunity, Lord. God, because I understand I may not get it again, God. Oh. So I give you all the honor and the praise, yes, Father God, God, that you rightfully deserve, yes. Father God. Yes, it's God. not about us, God, yes, but it's God. all about you, God. God. Yes. And I thank you, Father thank God, you, for Jesus. everything, God. Thank you, thank Lord, you, Lord. I come thank praying you. for the thank you. leaders of our country, Father God. I ask that you would bless them, Lord. Please, Lord, bless the people yes. that are supposed to be leading us, God. Help them to lead us, Father God, with their hearts, God, and not with their mind, God. Lord, help them to lead us, Father God, that we can come out of this better than what we were, Father God. Lord, but I know, God, if they can't seek you, Lord, I know that we can because we know you, God. And we can pray to you, Father God, in everything, God, that we can ask you for everything, God, because you told us in your word to ask, Father God. So, Lord, right now, Lord, help us, God, on help this us, God. Uh, journey, God. As we go on, Lord, that we would um, oh, uh, prepare oh, for the worst, Father God. Oh, we can expect yes. the best, but we can prepare for the worst. Yes. Lord, so that we know that your will is being done, God. Yes, God. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand clap of praise because he's worthy, yeah, yeah. worthy to be praised. Are y'all glad y'all woke up this morning? Yes, Lord. Amen. Are you glad yes, that you're able to tell the Lord, thank you? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Are you chasing after him today? Because he's the best thing in the world. I'm chasing after you, oh Lord. Yes. Come on. Woo! Put your hands together. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. Help me sing. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after I'm you. Chasing after you. No, matter what, no matter what I have to do. I need you, I need you more and more. 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 
Thank you, God. Oh, I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. I'm praising my way through. I'm praising my way through. Just to be close. Just to be close. of us y'all we have his peace on the inside of us so if we study his word and lean and depend on him because he's a holy 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 God when we think about his goodness and all that he's done Christ didn't have to die for us thank God he did Lord, you are holy, holy, holy. You are faithful. You are worthy. <laughs> you are holy. Search 
so but God, there is none it like is you. None like you. about it, y'all. God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God. There is no one I can serve. I can serve God. It is high. Lord, I can serve So we ask you now that you bring your babies into the place, into the room, so that we can sing to them one of their favorite songs. Father Abraham had many sons. Come on, let's join in with them. Come on, 
spinning around but up, up here we couldn't keep spinning around <laughs> we love y'all father god we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us on this morning lord god you woke us up in our right minds and you have brought us to this place but you have also uh, woke those individuals up that are at home, that are at nursing homes, that are in hospital beds. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you because it's a day that we have never seen before and will never see again. We thank you, Lord, because you are in total control. And Lord God, if it had not been for you, we would not be here on today. Lord, we come rushing right now asking, Lord, that you please forgive us for our sins those things that we did knowingly and unknowingly, those sins that we committed, Lord, knowing that we were way out of line and we did it anyway, we pray that you would forgive us. Uh, Father, we come right now, Lord, just thanking you because we know that uh, we are deep in the middle of a crisis, a pandemic, and we thank you because your word says that we ought to give thanks always. And so, Father, as we are in this, Father God, we are praying, Lord, that you would help us to get something out of this, Father God. We are praying, Lord, that you can help us, Father God, that on the other side, we can look back and have a testimony. Uh, Father, we thank you right now, Father. Father, we, we, we rush right now again asking, Lord, that you would be with those, that are bere those bereaved families, uh, those individuals who lost loved ones in the middle of this crisis, in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, we pray for the Robeson family. Yes. And we pray for the Edwards family. Uh, Father God, we pray for the Wiley family. Uh, Father God, we pray, pray for the Jones family. Uh, Lord, you know each and every one of those families, Father God. You know what they're going through right now. Uh, Father, we pray that you would touch them in a special way. Lord God, we know that again, that, uh, that to be absent from the body is to be present with you. So we thank you for that fact. Lord, we love you right now, Lord, and we are asking that you would open up our minds and that you would open up our hearts yes, God. so that we can hear a word from you. Because we know that in trying times, the best thing that we can do is hear a word from you. Uh, for God, because, Father, we know that you said you will never leave us or forsake us. We know in Scripture you the Red Sea to open. We've seen it, Lord. We've we seen where you... Uh, protected Daniel in the lion's den, Father God. We know, Lord, that you can do it. We've seen where you fed the 5,000, Lord, so we know that you are capable and able to bring us through this. This isn't a surprise to you, Lord. And we are praising you in the midst. We don't have uh, hung heads and, and, and bowed heads because we're sad. We, we, we have bowed heads because we are uh, paying homage to you. And we are praying to you, Father God, who was the, the, the most high God, the holy God. And so, Father God, we thank you right now, Lord, because we again know that you have us in the palm of your hands. And we can celebrate in that, Lord, that you have us in the palm of your hands. You have the whole world in the palm of your hands. So for those that are in Wuhan and for those that are in Italy and for those that are in France and those that are in, in, in Europe, Father God, and, and, and we know that you are covering them as well. For those that are in Africa, we know that you're covering them as well. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We pray for those, Father God, who don't know you in the pardon of their sin. We pray, Lord, that this message today would, would open up their minds and their hearts so that they can come crying, what can I do to be saved? We pray that this message would be clear, crystal clear to them, that the only Savior we have is your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Keith, for leading us in prayer. Again, for those of you who are listening by way of conference call, thank you so much for your participation on this Our Lord's Day. If you all want to come down, you certainly feel free to do so, please. Feel free to do so. Please, ma'am, please, sir, you all can come down. Thank God for the band. Not all of them are here today. We had to make some adjustments in our uh, social distancing, and so we are grateful and thankful again for those who were able to participate on this day. I'm going to ask you, if you would, just to turn to one passage of Scripture, but there are a few passages that we want to uh, look at today, in particular in Exodus chapter 14 at verse 36. Exodus chapter 14, verse 36. Six is going to remind us of where we are. Exodus chapter 14, I said verse 36, I actually met verse um, 30. Amen, amen. Exodus chapter 14, and this is going to be our, our, our passage for today. Matter of fact, rather than ex going at, at 14 now, let's go to verse to chapter 12. Chapter 12 and verse 36. I'm going to just do that for, for just this moment. At chapter 12, verse number 36. And the word of God says to us, And the Lord had given the people favor uh, in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. And then again, at verse chapter 14, one more time, at verse number 24, and it says, now it came to pass in the morning, watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians, and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty, and the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of, the, of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth with the Egyptians fleeing, were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. The waters were walled to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord, so the Lord, so the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Verse 31 says, thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord, his servant Moses. I want to use as a subject for today, from fear to faith, from fear to faith. That word, that word, that word fear, that word fear is a word that is actually being mentioned many times in our culture right now. It is a word of concern because people are afraid of what has taken place with COVID-19. People are afraid of what is happening with this invisible enemy, as many are calling it. People are afraid because the reality is anyone, any person at any time that one may come in contact with could be the very person that causes one or the other to be infected and therefore be affected to the point that a person could get sick and a person could ultimately die. So there is fear, there is concern, and it is fear from the standpoint of terror. It is a fear that literally causes one to be afraid of what is actually taking place. And so this word, this word fear in, in the Hebrew language is the word yari, the word yari, and it means fear encompassing also that of a threat 
to one's life, yet in our case, it should be about deep respect and reverence more than about dread for the coronavirus. If I could say that again, fear in our case, it, it encompasses a threat to one's life, yet in our case, it should be about deep respect and reverence more than about dread about someone or something. And so the hope is that at the end of this message, you and I will decide whether we are living a life of fear or whether we are living a life of faith. Because the reality for us that there ought to be, there should be a sense of fear based upon the text that we just read in verse number 31 of chapter 14 of the book of Exodus. It says, thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant. They had seen what the Lord had done in that, first of all, the Bible says that he had given favor to the Israelites who had been in bondage to Egyptians for 430 years. He had given them such favor that on the night that they departed from Egypt, the Bible says that the Egyptians began to give them their possessions. They had seen again the great power of God. They had seen again the great presence of God. They had been privy to be part of the Passover experience whereby God had allowed all, he had allowed the death angel to pass over the houses whereby there was blood on the doorposts and the lintels of the house. They had experienced the protection of God in that after three, after they had been released from Egypt, the Bible says that they found themselves at the Red Sea and they found themselves with Pharaoh's army coming behind them. But right after God demonstrated to them the past, Passover, he also demonstrated to them his protection in that the Bible says that there was a cloud that was between the Israelites and the army of Pharaoh all night long. God allowed them to walk across the Red Sea on dry ground. Somebody ought to help me here. They walked across the Red Sea on dry ground. The sea was still there, but it was water on the right side, water on the left side. And they walked across the sea on dry ground. Not only had they seen the protection of God at the Red Sea, but the Bible also shows us that they had experienced the provision of water in Exodus chapter 15. When they had gotten out of Egypt, the Bible says that after Three days, they went into the wilderness of Shur and they went there three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now, when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water of Mara for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it is called Mara. And the people complained against Moses. They had just witnessed the Red Sea open up. They had just witnessed Pharaoh's army actually being drowned in the sea. And the Bible says three days later, they were complaining that there was no water. They had experienced the Passover. They had experienced his protection. Now they had experienced the provision of water. Not only did they experience the provision of water, but in chapter 16, they, they, they experienced the provision of food. The Bible clearly says that after they journeyed from Elam and the, the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month. Here it is only one month later. They're not only complaining about they have no water, but they're now complaining that they had no food. But remember, they had seen God in the Passover. They had seen God in the protection at the Red Sea. They had witnessed what God had done in giving them, providing them water from a bitter stream. But the Bible says that they complained. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I do recognize that when there is fear, there's always the possibility of complaint. 
when we focus on the problem rather than on the one who can solve the problem, there's always the possibility of complaint. If since this thing has started, we, we are now into the 36th day of us having to do what we call live streaming, making plans for all of that, literally 40 days. And what I'm learning, I'm hearing a whole lot of folk talking about what's not. What I'm saying, y'all, rather than talking about what's not, we ought to be talking about what is. The mere fact that God wake us up every morning, we ought to be telling him thank you. The mere fact that he allows us to go throughout our day, we ought to be telling him thank you. The mere fact that we've been tested, but none of us or other than a few have found themselves positive. We ought to tell the Lord thank you rather than complaining about what we ain't got. The children of Israel experienced a time rather than that of faith. They were experiencing a time of fear. God had caused the Passover to happen. He had given them protection in, in Exodus 14. He provided them water in Exodus 15. He provided them food in Exodus 16. He provided water again in Exodus chapter 17. And then on top of that, they had provision in external conflict. When you read Exodus chapter 17, that was the time the Bible says that they went to fight against the Amalekites. And the Bible says that sure, one man had to hold up Moses' hand on the other one side and another held up his hand on the other side. But the Lord allowed them to experience provision from external conflict. There was an enemy that wanted to destroy them. There was an enemy that was coming against them. But the Lord provided them victory even in the external conflicts. There are a lot of things that we're hearing that are outside of us that we're not able to control, but we got to trust in the power of God. We got to trust in the ability of God, the same God that was able to give Israel victory over the Amalekites is the same God that can give us victory over the coronavirus. Not only was that provision in the external conflict, but that was also provision in the internal conflict. You remember in Exodus 18 that Moses is trying his best to answer everybody's question. He's trying to figure out everybody's problem, but Jethro had to go to him and tell him, Moses, this thing that you're not you're doing is not good. You and your people are going to perish. So Moses decided to take the advice of his father-in-law, and he put men in charge of helping. Why? Because there was internal conflict. What I'm trying to tell you, I don't know what's going on in your house. I don't know what's happening in your house. But all I'm saying is if you get things in order in the house, if the man be the man in the house, if the woman be the woman in the house, if the children be the children in the house, no matter how much internal conflict may arise, God will give you power. God will give you wisdom. God will give you victory. Men, this is not the time to turn over the house to the women. This is the time for us to take our rightful position as the men of our house. Praying men, loving men, men who don't mind telling the truth when it's necessary. It's time to get it in order because why? God has given us the provision for even the internal conflict. So here it is, they experienced Passover, they got protection, they got provision after provision after provision. And then when we continue to read in the book of Exodus, we discover that God shows his presence on the top of the mountain. Exodus chapter 19, pick it up at verse number one, it says, In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt on the same day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai for they had departed from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness of Sinai, camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. But notice what happens on the mountain and in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 through 19. It says, then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightning and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. The smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. 
And when the blast of the trumpet sounded low and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Come on, don't read this like you see this every day, brothers and sisters. Here it is that God shows his presence at the top of the mountain. And when God begins to speak, the Bible says, that the mountain began to quake. The Bible says that there was lightning falling. The Bible says that there was thunder all around and a cloud was over the mountain. And what did God do when he showed his presence on the top of the mountain? God began to proclaim. He began to proclaim that he was God and he made it publicly to the people. Can you imagine Moses is up on that mountain God, now the cloud is over the mountain. Thunder and lightning is falling everywhere. And God is talking. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? God is talking. I guess, I guess that's why the old folk, that's why the gold folk would tell us when, 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 when it started thundering and lightning, they tell you be quiet because God is doing his work. God was, was talking. He, he, he is now proclaiming what we come to know as the ten commandments but listen here's what here's what's strange about it here's what's what's unique about it he's given the ten commandments it sounds like can thunder and lightning it sounds it sounds it, it it's a sound that the people cannot understand but Moses is understanding everything that God is saying all I'm trying to tell us in the midst of all that we're going through right now we better be convinced that God is talking. Is anybody listening to what he's saying? I can assure you that God is talking. Somebody ought to be listening to him. The Bible says that he's on the mountain and he's proclaiming publicly to the people. You shall have no other God before me. And I don't know about you all, but I'm seeing how God has demonstrated to us, especially in the United States of America, all of those gods that we used to hold in on. He's got a way of showing us right now. You better let go of those gods that you've been counting on because at the end of the day, I literally stripped you of all of those gods that you count on the God of entertainment. God of entertainment is literally, he's literally push over to the side. They doing everything they can to try to entertain us the best they can. They coming up with virtual parties and virtual symphonies and, and, and virtual concerts. They coming up with everything they, they virtually can come up with. But the reality is God is showing us that when you put too much emphasis on one thing, I got the power to strip you down. There's anybody that's been counting on a job. God got a way of showing you that he can take that job away from you or he can reduce that job to literally being nothing. Why? Because we got some idols. But God is saying you shall have no other God before me. You shall have no other God beside me. He was proclaiming his word. Watch now, watch now. Not only did he make a proclamation and he made it publicly to the people, but God also made a proclamation and he made it privately for the people. When you get to Exodus chapter 25 all the way to chapter 31, God now is establishing what he wants to happen in the kingdom. Why? Because what he, in the tabernacle, because what he said is that the tabernacle would represent what? His presence. And he was showing that there were things that were necessary that needed to happen in the tabernacle. He was showing that it was representative of his presence. Y'all, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. It's clear to us that we know that we are the temple of God and God lives in us. The Holy Ghost lives in us. That Jesus resides in us. God don't necessarily need a building to worship him. But I don't know about y'all, but the fact that I can't come to the building now, I'm, I feel like it's some stuff that I'm missing out on. I'm missing out on hugging and touching my brothers and sisters I'm missing out on shaking hands I'm missing out on seeing people cry I'm missing out on hearing folks shout hallelujah I'm missing out why because I recognize that even though God is present in us 
God is also showing that he is present in our community. So he is committed to showing my presence by the fact that he would instruct a temple that would allow the people to come together as a place to demonstrate his presence. There's a proclamation that God made publicly to the people. There's a proclamation that God made privately for the people. But while all of that is going on, there's, there's his presence on the top of the mountain. But while all of that is going on, there's a problem at the bottom of the mountain. Notice Exodus 32, and I'm going to stop right there. Exodus chapter 32 verse 1 says, Now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us God that shall go before us for as for this Moses the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt we do not know what has become of him Moses had gone up on the mountain and the Bible says that he was there for 40 days and 40 nights now remember God had spoken in Exodus chapter 20 and the first thing that God said that sounded like thunder, but Moses could understand it, was you shall not have no other God before me. The second thing he said, you will make no graven image. And watch this. While Moses is at the top of the mountain, the people of God down at the foot of the mountain, breaking the first two commandments. Can I get somebody to help me here? 40 days ago, I told y'all, you shall have no other God before me. 40 days ago, I told you not to make any graven image. But while the Lord was up, Moses is up on the mountain with the Lord. They're down at the foot of the mountain, breaking. Here, here, here's my question to us. When this thing is over, when we'll be able to go back to the restaurants, when we'll be able to come back to church together, when we'll be able to go back to the malls, when we'll be able to go back to what is a sense of normalcy. My question is, Will there be any change in us? Will, will, will there be any change in us? Or will we go back to doing the same things that we were doing in March and February? Will we go back to doing things the exact same way that we used to do them? Notice again, he reminds us in verse chapter 32. At verse 25, I love that, I love that. Because the Bible says that God told Moses, I need you to go down, Doc. Because I'm hearing some, some funny sound down there. In other words, verse 17 says, And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, Exodus 32, as they shouted, he said to Moses, There's a noise of war in the camp. But he said, Moses said, ah, it is not the noise of the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but I hear the sound of singing. That's what I hear. But notice what he reminds him in verse, in verse number 25. Now when Moses saw that the people were unrestrained, for Aaron had not restrained them, to their shame among their enemies. Meaning that when Moses went up on the mountain, y'all remember the story. The Bible says that the people said Moses been gone too long. And so we need us a God. Did y'all hear what I said? We need us another God. Moses been gone too long. We need us another God. Well, well, well. <laughs> Well, the Bible says, when they said that to, to, to Aaron, Aaron said, hey, bring me y'all earrings. Take your earrings and 
let's mold it and make it and shape it into the form that we wanted to make. We want to make it. When Moses comes down from the mountain, he looks at Aaron and says, Aaron, what did you do? Of course, Aaron lied. He lied. He lied, y'all. He, he just flat out lied. Aaron, Aaron said, he said, he said, the people say, and he said, Moses, you know they're hard-headed. You know they're stiff-necked. The people say, make us a God. So I told the people, pull off your earrings. And Moses, when I had them pull off the earrings, I threw the gold in the fire, and this calf came out. Aaron, you know you lie. But the problem was that Aaron now had failed to restrain the people. And notice what he says in verse 25. They were unrestrained. Everybody say para. That word para means they, they, they were literally out of control. The people, the people had gotten out of control. And y'all, I don't know about, I don't know what y'all are hearing, but I heard Denise even in her prayer, is some folk right now that are out of control. Just because you can't go to work, just because you can't go out, just because you can't get to your bar, just because you don't have a happy hour, just because we got to be shut down and work safe, don't mean that we need to be out of control. No, no, this is not the time to say, as a man, look, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the big chief of this house. If you show that you are a servant of God, your house can get in order quicker than demanding that it get in order doesn't matter if you are mom and you're just demanding y'all children, y'all going to do what? You know those children are younger and smaller than you and they act just like you. So trying to tell them to be quiet, that ain't going to always work for them because what's happening, too many of us are out of control. Now that the governor has kind of opened the door. And said you can get back to some normalcy. I need to warn somebody today. Don't get out of control. Don't become so free that you think you can do what you've been doing. The Bible says that they had gotten out of control. Oh, but thank God that God gave a challenge. And I'm done at verse 26. Then Moses said in the entrance of the camp and said, he stood in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. Whoever, whoever is on the Lord's side. Because the reality, if you got fear, if you don't turn to the Lord, your fear can never become faith. But oh, when you turn to the Lord, you quickly recognize that even though I got a little bit of fright on the inside, when I think about the Lord and all that he's already done, when I think about the Lord and how he's already made a way, when I think about the Lord and how he's already brought us through, Yes, when I think about the Lord and the fact that he keep waking us up early in the morning and he protects us all night long, I'm convinced today that my faith is not in the White House. My faith is not in the capital of Texas. My faith is not in the commission of Harris County. My faith is not in the city mayor. But oh, God, you got to have faith in God. I don't know what may be fearful of you. I don't know what may be keeping you up at night. But all I'm saying, the Bible says, yeah, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil.
for thou art with me your rod and your staff they comfort me i don't know who you are but come out of the lord's side come out of the lord's side on the lord's side you got peace on the lord's side you got joy on the lord's side you got hope on the lord's side he's got a way of letting you know everything is gonna be all right i gotta ask you in the all right 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 if you know he's all right say yeah say yeah say yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, i know he's all right we gotta move from fear to faith put our trust in the law not not what man is saying trust in the Lord not not what medicine is telling you trust in the Lord not not the bad news that you're hearing trust in the Lord so that you can move from fear to faith and only, only when you look and come on the Lord's side will you look past the problem and look at the one who can fix the problem. Not only can he fix the problem, but he already showing us he got the problem under control. But we've got to put our trust, our faith, our confidence in him. Because only then only then because if we stay in fear y'all we're gonna complain if we stay in fear we're gonna blame folk for stuff that they ain't even got no control over but when we trust in the lord when we put our faith in the lord when we come over to his side when we when we recognize he's got it in control we can move from fear to faith i'm not saying it ain't scary but I am saying, don't let the scary control you. Don't let the fear control you. Let faith in God be the thing that controls you. Because he ultimately, he ultimately, just like he did it for Israel, just like he did it for Jesus, just like he did it for Paul, just like he did it for James, John, and Peter, he is doing it for you and I put our trust in him father how we love you and thank you for knowing that you got it all in control so help us to move from fear to faith no longer putting our focus on the external but to put our trust in internally what you have done to us what you have done through us to your son the lord jesus christ and we pray, God, that going forward, we will not be fearful of taking a test. We will not be fearful while we're waiting on the test. Because we know that even if the test is positive, you are the God that heals. You're the God that has all power. The God that can do everything. And God, we, we clearly know that the the cupboard may get lower, but we're convinced that you said in your word, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. We believe by faith that you will supply. God, I got some folk that don't have no jobs right now. Some of them are being furloughed, but God, I pray that they would have faith to know that you still know how to supply that need according to your riches and glory. Help us to move from fear to faith. 
so that our lives bring glory and praise and honor to you. We ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. And all who agree said amen. Amen, amen. Listen, if you are listening to us by way of live streaming or by conference call, we want to extend to you the invitation to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. He, he is the way that you move from fear to faith. Because the Bible says that Abraham believed God. He believed what God said. He believed that God was able to do the impossible. So today, if you believe that uh, uh, the stimulus check going to work for you, if you can believe that if you go to your job, everything is going to be all right, that says that you've got faith. But here is my encouragement to you is to put your faith not in those things, but to put your faith in God. And on the proclamation that God said, if you believe in my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. So today, if you haven't trusted him as your savior, today is the day. Today is the day. Right now was the moment. And so right where you are, you can trust him. And what we would say to you is that you've made a decision to trust Jesus today. You will call our church office. The line is always open. We're always checking on that line. The phone number to call is 713-672-9847. 713-672-9847. And that will be the way that you can get entrance, if you would, into the fact that you would say today, I trusted Jesus as my Savior. And it may be that you might make Good Shepherd your church of choice, but it may be that you are somewhere else. And if you would call us, maybe we can direct you to whatever choice church you may choose to go to. So today, say yes to Jesus so that you can stop saying yes to fear. Unless that fear is a reverence for God, a respect for God, a recognition that God got all power and that he can do all things. Father, we love you and thank you again for your word that is so true and powerful. Your word that is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. That cuts to the very asunder of both the bone and the marrow of our hearts. We thank you, Father, for that awesome reality. Again, of seeing the Passover, but also God seeing your power, seeing your protection, hearing your proclamation on the mountain. And even though there was a problem at the bottom of the mountain, you declared who was on the Lord's side. And you gave the people that believe a reprieve, even though you had the right to your anger and to your wrath and to your justice. We thank you again for Jesus, who makes it all right for us. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all who agree said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Right now, we want to... Uh, Say it's offering time. It's offering time. Again, the Bible clearly says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 that God would love a cheerful giver. Again, there's some of you that are out there who know that your, your finances have been altered as a result, again, of the lack of hours on your job. In some cases, the lack of job. According to 2 Corinthians 8, God is not expecting you to give what you don't have but he's expecting you to give according as how he has blessed you. So trust him uh, that even though it may be a little, God can take a little and turn it into a lot. So we would ask again that you would give in accordance as God has God has blessed you. Father, thank you now for the giver and we thank you for the gift. Knowing God, if you didn't give us all that we needed, we could not attain, we could not maintain, the gifts that you have given us. I pray now that you would give us a mind to be the kind of giver that you call for us to be because the word clearly says to us that you love a cheerful giver. Help us to give that way. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake we pray it. Amen. So I'm trusting and believing again that most of you as members of our church you are doing well. We know that the deacons are trying to reach some of you they can't they can't get some of y'all i don't know why y'all not answering the phone but they just concerned about you they just concerned they want to know how you're doing they're not trying to dig into your business they just want to know genuinely how you're doing because we have a responsibility we feel as servant leaders of this church uh to be able to see about those 
uh, that God has given us the responsibility to oversee. Again, I'm asking you to pray for us. Continue praying for Barbara Matthews. Uh, as we announced uh, this, this earlier this week that her father died. The, uh, the funeral services is going to be uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, based on the law, I don't think anything has changed unless uh, Governor Abbott changes something this week. Uh, we know we're still at the limit of 10 people uh, that will be there. So let's be, just be praying for Barbara, praying for her siblings, again, praying for the family that God will continue to bless. Pray again for uh, all of his loved ones that are concerned about him, that are going to miss him uh, as a result of his death. And then we're also praying for Yancy Robeson, whose father died, uh, again, not COVID related. Uh, neither one of them is COVID related. It's just, again, uh, the, the reality. We're living in a fallen world and people are still going to die. And so I, I ask that you would be praying for that family, praying for Yancine, for her family. Uh, we don't know when that service is going to be, but whenever we have that information, we'll make sure to uh, pass that on to each and every one of you. Um, don't forget, again, our regular Bible study is going to take place on this week. For those of you that are already sharing the things that you're doing with the young people, uh, with the, uh, the young adults, uh, the men's ministry that met on Wednesday night uh, with Brother Keith, thank you all so much. The women's ministry uh, that met with Andrell on this past Tuesday night, thank you all so much for your participation. It's, it's still what, what God expects us to do, brothers and sisters. Uh, we don't want to be out of control. We don't want to be unrestrained during this time where we're not seeing each other and the like. Because at the end of the day, God still sees all and God still knows all. Amen. We're getting ready now to, uh, to make our transition to, uh, to Sunday school. And uh, I, just wanted, I just want to share this. And Marcia is going to be sharing a message uh, with our, uh, our women. Um, and just want to apply the scripture to what we're saying uh, in the word of God. Paul, Paul reminds us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, he says, And I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Here at our church, we continue again to practice what the scripture is saying, that uh, our women do not teach our men. So I'm going to ask you, brothers, uh, those of you that will, you excuse yourself again. When we come back on the air uh, in about 12 minutes uh, from now, when we come back on the air, this is a message that's primarily for our women uh, that Mars is going to be uh, sharing with them. So I pray that everyone will return to, uh, to share in that message. So right now, I think it's uh, we're looking at about 1014. We're going to say right at uh, 1027, 1028, right in that area. We're going to come back for our Sunday school uh, at that point. And so I ask that you would be praying for her. And right after that, Denise is also going to be just giving words of encouragement to our women. So I'm going to ask you all to stay tuned in uh, uh, and, um, and, and listen again to our minister, minister of women, uh, who is going to be sharing a, a word of encouragement with us. Again, remember, we still got to do church, y'all. We still, we still have to do ministry. Uh, we still have to serve, do those things that God has called for us to do. And we want to do it in an excellent manner. I want to again, thank, uh, Stefan and uh, Zacchaeus for allowing us to do the live stream in the way that we're doing it. They're doing it in an excellent way. Again, for those of you that continue to call the conference call, thank you so much. We're going to pause right now for about 12, 13 minutes. Come back definitely. I'm just going to, yeah, going to come back again about 12, 20, I'm sorry, 10, 28. Thank you. Thank you. I did forget something. We got some birthdays. I need a power clap right now. Ashley Lewis, Brenda Mitchell, April Aguilar, Angela Haywood. Happy birthday to each and every each and every one of you. We have one wedding anniversary. Thank you for the reminder. And that is Kelly and Yolanda Jason, 13 years on April the 29th. Now, Lord, thank you again for bringing us together as you have on today. Thank you for allowing every song to be sung. Thank you again for our ladies. Thank you again for Anthony. Thank you for Warren and Ken. And God, we pray that as we continue to move forward in this day, that you will be glorified in what we say and what we do. To the end, Father, that the glory, the praise, and the honor will be yours and yours alone. We thank you again for all you are and for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. And all who agree it said, amen.
We're getting ready to pause now. We'll be off for about 12 minutes. Come on back in about 12 minutes. Sister Marcia will be leading our women. Fellas, we can consider ourselves excused at this time. God bless you. Until we meet again.